Hello there, rather, namaste. My name is Aprajita and today I am going to be answering some questions that Jay has prepared on behalf of Words and Warriors. My father was a martyr in the Kargil War, one of India's finest sons of the soil. I am the proud daughter of Major Padmapani Acharya, Mahavir Chakra, also known as the hero of Dras for leading his company to capture the knoll top in area Black Rock, which was crucial for India's victory in the Kargil War. Three is the story of Major Acharya. Well, how to sum it up? My father is the son of an Air Force officer, the grandson of a freedom fighter. His values and his personality are both instilled and inspired from this background. I'm sure you've heard of the bravery of my father, but today I would like to tell you about something lesser known, his compassion. I personally believe that we can know so much about a person by the way they treat animals. I have grown up listening to so many stories of my father's love for animals. When he was a young boy, he would often get these injured birds like owls and sparrows home to nurse them back to health. Be it stray dogs or the pets at home, he loved them to no end. Even on active duty, he would play with these dogs, give them names, chat up with them. Not just birds and dogs, I have pictures of him playing with mules, sheep. He didn't just play with them or chat up with them. He slept with them sometimes. In fact, in the letters he would write back about our pet Kajal, people actually believed that I had a sister and they thought Kajal was my sister for the longest time until we had to clear it out that she was actually our pet. From what I have heard of his childhood, he was hyper, he was curious, but what stood out for me was the kind of pranks he played, the numerous funny stories that I have personally grown up hearing. Apparently, he once dressed up as a lady and pranked the ladies in the Air Force Station. My father was a fantastic storyteller, imaginative and creative. People loved listening to his stories. Some of them too, mostly made up, but so lifelike. Even in his letters from the front, he would talk about the beautiful terrain, the exotic animals. He never spoke about what he was going through, the fear, danger, so he was combating the enemy, not knowing if he will live to see tomorrow. He painted a beautiful Walt Disney movie. He spoke about the starry sky and the world where bears were stealing jars of honey or where they were playing catch with sheep. He did not want to worry his family back home and in the process of doing so, he lightened his own spirits. He found joy in the smallest things and that's one of the things I love about him. His personality, from what I've heard, was confidence. In fact, my mother met him on a train and in that brief interaction she knew that he was the man she wanted to spend the rest of her life. My father was a hotel management grad. One day he decided that I want to join the young and there was no looking back from there. He lived every day to the fullest like there was no tomorrow. The second question how do I feel being the daughter of a martyr? I think the best way to probably describe it would be it is bittersweet. I'm very proud that my father did his life for the nation. Could I have wanted him with me? Yes. But he gave me enough strength to live without him being physically present. He's otherwise always there with me. What is a proverbial father supposed to do? Model. He is the biggest role model I can imagine in my life. He pays for my school fees and says pension that still pays my fees. And I think his share of love has been given to me by all elders and younger ones in the family. So I'm the most loved one. And I do miss him. But I think when God puts you in a certain situation, he gives you the strength to be. I was him. Okay, so the third question is how has the army helped me morally? Well, I think the Indian army has treated me like they would treat any other officer's child. In fact, a little more. I would like to actually talk about an incident which is related to the book. So after the book was ready, and this is right before the book launch, I called up the editor of a very renowned news daily. And he said that your story is 18 years old and it doesn't really fit into the kind of 
things we do. So we won't be able to cover it. He said that it's not even that big an event. The next week, after the Indian Army had come in, every single newspaper in all languages across the nation had to cover the book launch, including that Tuesday. So they've always been there for me. And though I never lived with the unit, they've always treated me like the Paldar Ki Bachi. They have always updated us on what is happening in the unit, looked out for us, ensured that we have got that we got all the benefits that we are supposed to. In fact, a couple years back, they were celebrating their bicentry, the 200 years, and they made these caps for all officers. And the daddy is not physically there anymore. They made a cap for him too. Even a gesture like that, I thought it was really sweet. And I met so many officers who told me, in fact, and men too, told me amazing stories about him. Last year, I thought I was finally ready to meet my father in his karma bhoom. My family was very encouraging, but they were worried too. But the assurance that the Indian Army gave them and the way they took care of me was better than I could have ever imagined. From sepoys to generals, everybody held my hand. They knew this was going to be tough for me. And I think all the soldiers helped me soldier through my emotions to be one with my father. I think the Indian Army has taught me not to give up on my country, on loyalty, on my aspirations and on family. Next question is how do you feel when you hold your father's Mahavir Chakra over there? I feel a sense of pride. I feel, I think about his bravery, his courage, his leadership. And I know it sounds cliche, but those are the qualities I aspire to emulate. And someday, I wish to serve the nation the way he did. I've held the Mahavi Chakra a handful of times in all these years, because every single time I hold it, it just, it overwhelms me of what it takes to deserve a medal of such high honor. And last year, Indian Army said that the next of kin can wear the medal. And I hope someday I am worthy and I serve my country in such a way that I can even think of probably doing so. Next question The story behind your book, how the thought of writing a biography came in your mind? Well, this was around years back, a little over two years, I had gone to Surat with my mother for a program to honor martyrs and I met the next of kin of soldiers who had martyred in various operations of the Indian Army. And I came back, one day it just hit me, I thought that I had done enough as a daughter to honor the memory of my father and to tell the world his story. The book started with an attempt to just put together his letters, his photographs, which was probably supposed to be there at home when people visited. And suddenly, before we even knew it, people were interested in getting a copy. People wanted to write stories for the book. And that's how it came to be. This is the book I proudly say I have co-authored with Daddy. Because it is his stories and his letters and his pictures that truly really make this book what it is. We call it Aar Babu, the hero of Dras because he left as Aar Babu, but he came back as the hero of Dras. The journey of this book, though was meant to tell the world his story, I discovered him through this story. I heard so many stories about him. And you know, you feel that you love somebody so much that your emotions couldn't grow any more. But they actually did. I almost felt most close to him after this book was done. And in fact, somebody, they read this book and they said, after we have read this book, it's almost like we've met him. And that was exactly what I set out to achieve. For people who knew him, to cherish the memory they had with him. And for the people who didn't, to feel like they met him. The cover of this book 
is designed by us. Every single page. No editor, no publisher. It was designed by all of us. We selected the background, how every single thing would be placed. And I think it was a beautiful journey. In fact, I must tell this, you know, when every single time we would talk of him at home, our hearts would get really heavy. You know, we would get teary-eyed. And it was, it was not a very easy subject. But this book kind of made us face our emotions, talk about him every single day for months together to bring out his things without being overwhelmed by it. And I think that journey has been beautiful. The last question here is a message for the younger generation and people. What can I say? I mean, I don't really have that many experiences in life to advise people. But I really feel that this is something I have experienced growing up. That patriotism is not a choice. You could live where you want to and work where you want to. But our country lives through us and within us. We are a part of it. We make India what it is. Just live, love and honor your country. That is what matters the most. Mera Bharat Jai.